Hello everyone, welcome to our story time here at the Lunaburg Library. We are again inside. It's a little too, too chilly to be outside on the patio at this time of year. But as we all know, spring is, will come again as it always does. So we'll just hang in there, enjoy our time together this way for the time being. Um, as we have always started our alfresco story time, um, again today, let's, let's start with our welcome song. It's been a, a couple weeks, but hopefully we still remember the song and, and the, the sign language that goes along with it. All right? Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Well, hello, everybody. Good to see you again. Um, we're going to let our, our friend, um, Mr. Fresco, out of his basket. Oh, here he is. And, oh, I see he brought us some, some words today. Oh, I see the, uh, well, we left them over here, so let me just grab those. All right, so, bonjour, no, bonjour, no, boys and girls. It's nice to see you again, uh, Mr. Fresco. I hope you had a nice Christmas. Um, you have a couple of words, phrases in Italian for us to talk about today. Um, first of all, one that, that I'd like to share with all of you, and it's Felice Anno Nuovo. Felice Anno Nuovo. In Italian, that means, as you may guess, Happy New Year, Felice. So that's one of them. <clears throat> I have a card like this. And if ever you're wondering about some of the Italian words that we have, if you stop by the library or up at the playground, um, take a walk down to the patio, and I have them all taped up in the window so you can take a peek and see how many, uh, if you can rem remember how to pronounce any of them, and um, if you can remember the story time that went along with them. And then today's story time, I'm going to put Mr. Fresco over here for now, is all about this wonderful stuff right here. Do you know what's in here? Oh, it still smells wonderful. I popped it a while ago. Sure, popcorn. We're gonna have a popcorn story time today. How fun. Mmm, delicious. So, I looked up the Italian word for popcorn, and when I saw it written, I thought, it just says popcorn. That must be what, how they say it. No, what they say, the word looks the same, but they say popcorn. Popcorn. So, just a, another way to pronounce those syllables that are letters that are, that are written here. Okay, so we are having our Papa Corona story time today. So I thought we'd start out with a popcorn book. This is a brand new one that we just got here at the library. So uh, if you're interested in checking it out, it's going to be available to circulate soon. Okay. This is by Rowena. Hmm. Just needs a first name, I guess. First name and last are the same. Well, my goodness. I really like popcorn. It's the best thing to eat. It's much better by far than candy for a treat. So this particular evening, I, it came to my mind, I'd have some popcorn to help me unwind. Ever do that? Pop a nice big bowl of popcorn as you're sitting there with your good book or maybe watching a favorite movie. The amount of kernels in the pan didn't look like half enough, for my mouth was really watering at the thought of that good stuff. Uh-oh. <coughs> so I added another cup or two to the, <coughs> excuse me, I shouldn't have used that popcorn. To the oil that was hot, I put a lid on the pan and waited for it to pop. When I heard the popping begin, I was filled with glee, for soon I'd have a pan full of popcorn for me. <clears throat> Can you see what's happening? <clears throat> the popcorn got louder, and to my surprise, the lid came off the pan right before my startled eyes. Can you imagine? Yikes. Oh, the popcorn was exploding. It was in the air. <clears throat> it was all over the stove. It was everywhere. I tried to catch it by opening the oven door. 
Hmm. <laughs> I guess maybe that seemed like a good idea. But it filled the oven and then it fell to the floor. Now his first mistake was when he decided to make more popcorn by adding a cup or two. Oh my goodness. Yikes. Look at that. Woohoo. I try I hurried to the closet to fetch the broom, and when I returned it, it spread to the next room. I stared in disbelief and I became quite forlorn, for my house quickly became filled with popcorn. What could I do? I could not guess, but how would I be able to clean up this mess? Then a thought came to me, and within a minute, I was happy my house had so much popcorn in it. So what do you think? Hmm, how would you go about getting rid of all that popcorn? What would be your idea? Hmm, maybe invite some friends over. Okay, you can't now, but at some point, it might have been a good idea. Invite some friends over. Just bring your own bag. Hmm, maybe sweep it out into the yard. Oh, that's not a good idea. That might work. Let's see what he decides to do. Well, now I could have popcorn morning, noon, and night. What a wonderful happening. What a tasty delight. So I had it for breakfast, for dinner, and lunch. In between meals on that popcorn, I'd munch. Hmm. And before I knew it, I awoke one day to find that I had eaten all the popcorn away. So if you like popcorn and it comes to mind that you'll have yourself some, have yourself some to help you unwind. And if you think you are hungry for a lot of that good stuff, remember a small amount of kernels in the pan is probably quite enough. So if you look at the small amount, it says one quarter cup makes a big bowl of fluffy popcorn. Probably enough, wouldn't you say? That was a cute story. Hmm. Do you remember when uh, Big Anthony got a hold of Streganona's pasta pot? <laughs> it reminds me of that story. That was a good one. Okay, so now, bring this up here. You know how to make popcorn, right? Let me just show you something to have some popcorn kernels right here. Let's open up this little bag. <clears throat> oh, well, here they are. And it's hard to believe, I'm sure you've all seen unpopped popcorn before, they call them kernels. And do you know how this works? Inside this very hard little kernel of corn, and it really is corn, um, there's a little tiny bit of moisture. Do you know what moisture is? It's like water, dampness. There's a little speck of dampness in here. And as you heat up the popcorn, because you know that's how you make popcorn, right? You've got to apply heat to these kernels. Um, as you heat it up, that kernel, that, that the uh, little bit of water that's inside the kernel starts to steam. And steam, and it creates steam. And what happens after a while, that steam gets so great that it bursts right outside of the outside of the kernel, the hole. It pops it right open, and then you go from that little thing, let me find a big one here, to this nice big fluffy piece of corn, which is really easy. These to munch and crunch. I'm not gonna eat another one last time. I got a little clot in my throat. A little hard little kernel. You wouldn't want to eat that, would you? But this crunchy little bit, mm-mm. Do you like yours with with butter and salt, yeah, at least with salt anyway. So those are the kernels. There's, I did a little bit of research to find out, well, how would you cook popcorn? Oh my goodness, everybody has their way that's the best. You can put just put some kernels in a brown bag and stick it in the microwave, that works. Um, you can have a fancy popcorn popper, that, that works great. You can uh, put it in a pan with some oil and put a lid on top and keep it moving. Yep, that also works really well. Well, we're gonna do a little poem right now all about um, popcorn. And it goes like this. Five little kernels in a pot, add some heat, and soon the first one goes pop.
now. Whoops. <laughs> Stay in the pan. Come on. Okay, now how many? Four little kernels all hot in the pot. All of a sudden, another one goes pop. We have three little kernels all hot in the pot. All of a sudden, another one pops. There we go. So now we have three pieces of popcorn and two kernels left. Two little kernels all hot in the pot. All of a sudden, one kernel goes pop. Steam has just made that burst. How many left now? Just one. One little kernel. It was staying fine before. All hot in the pot. All of a sudden, the kernel went up. So now, come on. Five little kernels of popcorn in the pot. What do you do next, you know? Munch, 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 munch. Yeah, that's a fun one. Okay, I have a couple of things for us to do today. We're going to do a little popcorn uh, experiment. We're going to make our popcorn kernels dance. And we're also, I'll also show you your craft because we do have a take home craft for this week. So I'll show you how that works in just a minute. Nope, I was going to give you a little hint, but I'll, I'll wait and show you in a minute. There's something cool. Before we do this, I don't know if you're familiar with this story. It's one of my favorites. It's called The Popcorn Dragon. Hmm, Jane Fair wrote this story. Let's see what this popcorn dragon is going to do. Dexter was a dragon with a green scaly body and a long twisty tail. He had short knobby legs and wings like a bat's, which he would be able to fly with when he was older. You see, now they're pretty small. Like all dragons, Dexter had hot breath. When he got mad or excited his, and breathed extra hard, his breath would grow extra hot. One day, Dexter felt sad because he had nobody to play with. He was so sad. He sighed a deep sigh. Can you do that? <sighs> Out of his mouth came a cloud of smoke. Why, look at me, said Dexter. I'm blowing smoke. He could hardly believe it. He sat still and breathed hard, and sure enough, there was smoke coming out of his mouth. I never knew I could blow smoke. So he ran to his mother, panting for joy, and he shouted, Look at me, I'm blowing smoke. He ran to the edge of the river where he could see himself in the water and he said, oh, just look at that smoke. He thought, I'm gonna show the other animals how I can blow smoke. Dexter began to stroll up and down and he puffed a little smoke here and he puffed a little smoke there as if blowing smoke was just nothing. After a while, he saw the other animals the giraffe and the zebra and the elephant peeking at him from behind some rocks. Can you see their faces? I hold it up closer. Hmm, do they look impressed? Maybe a little, but mostly they look a little bit nervous, I'd say. The giraffe, the zebra, and the elephant all came out and watched Dexter blowing smoke. Their eyes nearly popped out of their heads. Dexter blew smoke until he looked like a bonfire. Oh my. Pretty soon, the giraffe slipped quietly away and hid behind a rock. He said, whew, trying to blow smoke the way Dexter did. Can he do it? No. Then the zebra ran off and disappeared over a hill. He said, whew, and whew, trying to blow smoke like Dexter. But he couldn't do it. Finally, the elephant said, goodbye, I have to go. So he trotted off into the woods and guess what he tried to do? Hoo, 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 said, he said, pooh, who wants to blow smoke? Couldn't do it either. They all came back and watched Dexter out of the corner of their eyes just to see how he blew smoke. <laughs> and as you can imagine, Dexter was delighted. And he said, I can blow smoke and you can't. Oh, no, that's not very funny. Dexter pranced around, showing off. 
he chased a yellow, yellow butterfly with his smoke and he puffed a cloud of smoke at a green grasshopper and he even scared a little striped chipmunk with his smoke. Well, he's not being very friendly. He even puffed a small puff, accidentally of course, right at the other animals. The smoke felt rather warm to the other animals and the giraffe said, hey, you stop it. And the zebra said, I'm going home. Hmm. So Dexter stopped blowing smoke, he thought. Well, I don't want them to go home. And he said loudly, oh, uh, well, I guess I won't blow plain smoke anymore. I think I'll blow smoke rings. So he stuck his head straight up in the air and blew the smoke out in the ring. Look at that, that's pretty fancy. You think they'll be impressed? The other animals just had to watch Dexter blow those smoke rings. They moved back a little so they wouldn't get scorched. And they watched until they were so envious they could hardly stand it. Oh, they so wanted to be able to do that. Finally, the elephant said, certainly is silly blowing smoke rings. And he started to stalk away. Dexter stopped blowing smoke rings and he thought, hmm, what can I do to make them stay? So he said loudly, oh, I guess I won't blow plain smoke rings anymore. I think I'll blow smoke rings around my tail. Whoa. So he turned his head and blew smoke rings around his tail. And he swished his tail this way and blew rings around it. And he switched his tail that way and blew rings around it. And finally he swished it so hard he hit himself in the nose. The blow brought tears to his eyes. Dexter blinked quickly and said, see, I can even hit myself in the nose. Hmm. Oh, the animals were so envious, not knowing how Dexter's nose hurt, that they couldn't bear to watch one more minute. So Zebra said, oh, that Dexter is always showing off. And the giraffe said, we don't like him, do we? And the elephant said, come on, let's go. Oh, look at Dexter's face. Do you think maybe he realized he'd gone too far? Yeah, that's a sad face. When Dexter saw the other animals actually going, he stopped blowing smoke rings and suddenly he remembered that he wanted someone to play with. So he called out, hopefully, you want, to come, want me to come with you? And the giraffe said, no, they didn't. Oh, a little bit upset with Dexter. Dexter watched them go. Then he went home and he said to his mother in a forlorn voice, oh, I haven't got anything to do. So his mother said, well, blow some smoke. Well, I don't feel like it, said Dexter. And his mother said, well, go play with the other animals. Oh, they won't play with me, said Dexter. Well, then you must have been showing off, his mother said. Hmm, I guess she knew her, her little dinosaur pretty well. Dragon, I'm sorry, not dinosaur. Let's get those two mixed up. Dexter wandered down the road to where the other animals were playing. Ah, oh, he did wish he could play too. So he sat down to watch them play. The zebra shouted, we don't like you, you know, so just go away. Oh, Dexter was very sorry now that he'd showed off. He had no one to play with and he was tired of blowing smoke. So he wandered into a cornfield and lay down in the shade of the tall corn stalks. Anybody know where this is going? Hmm. He watched a yellow butterfly flutter against the blue sky and he watched a green grasshopper hop on a blade of green grass. The butterfly and grasshopper did not know or care how lonely Dexter felt. He could hear the far off voices of the animals playing and they sounded like they were having a wonderful time. The sun was warm and the sound of the insects and the far off voices began to make Dexter feel drowsy. Dexter began to dream that fireworks were going off. 
Then he dreamed that the most delicious smell in the world was around him. He woke up and he heard pop, 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 pop. Popcorn, cried Dexter. Right under his nose was an ear of corn that had fallen off the stalk onto the ground. Dexter's hot breath was popping the corn right on the ear. Pop, 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 pop. The kernels came popping off. Dexter reached out and gobbled some. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Mmm, oh, this is so good, said Dexter. Soon the popcorn on the ground was all gone and Dexter wanted more. So he stood up on his hind legs and pulled the husks off an ear of corn on a corn stalk. I have a question for you. Do you think if you went to your local farm stand or, or went to a, your farmer's field and, and um, grabbed onto a, an ear of corn and brought it home, do you think, and, and, and heated it up, do you think that would turn into popcorn? No, there are certain, a certain type of corn that is grown that makes popcorn. It's a very special kind of corn. So not any kind of corn can be popped. Um, the very first people, when, when uh, we discovered them living here in, um, in North America, um, used to grow that kind of corn and they would take the, the, the cobs with the kernels still attached and kind of stick it on a stick and hold it over the fire and they would pop the corn right on the, right on the cob and make this delicious popcorn that they could then eat right off the right off the cob. The only problem was as they're popping it, as you can imagine, a lot of it fell off into the fire. So they lost a lot that way, but that's how they did it. And then the other thing they discovered was um, other people when they made popcorn used it as a breakfast food. And so they'd put it in a bowl and maybe add some fruit and some milk and, and have it like a big bowl of cereal. Hmm. Ever gotten popcorn wet? It isn't something I would particularly care for. It gets a little slimy when it's wet. The popcorn smell began to drift through the air. The giraffe, the zebra, and the elephant stopped their playing and they said, Ah, oh, popcorn. They put their noses up in the air and went toward that smell. When Dexter looked up from his crunching, they were peeking around the corn stalks. So Dexter swallowed the popcorn and quickly said, would you like to have some? The giraffe, the zebra, and the elephant cried, Ah, but you've eaten it all up. But Dexter said, Oh, don't worry, I'll just pop some more. He moved eagerly along the rows of corn stalks to a new place and quickly pulled off some of the husks. His hot breath started to pop the corn and the popcorn fell on the ground. The animals crunched and munched and soon the popcorn was gone. Dexter, Dexter said quickly, for fear they would go away again. I'll pop some more if you want. The animals looked at each other. The giraffe said, ah, oh, that Dexter is very nice when he isn't showing off. And the zebra said, let's ask him to play with us too. And the elephant said to Dexter, wanna play with us, Dexter? What do you think Dexter said? Oh, yes. He was so delighted that before he knew it, he breathed a little hard and out came a cloud of smoke. Oh no, but Dexter quickly turned his head to one side. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, please, he said politely. And when they had played until they were hungry, Dexter popped popcorn for everyone. You think they were enjoying having their time together? I think so. I think maybe Dexter learned his lesson. Not good to be too braggy, as they say. That was a great story. Yep, I still like it. Thanks, Jane Fair, for writing such a good story. Okay, so we're going to do a little um, Gourne experiment right now. Um, I have everything set up at the table behind me. I'm going to make some popcorn dance. Now, <laughs> I didn't do this ahead of time. I've done it before, but not in a while. So let's hope that this all goes well. All right? Let's take a look. So on the table here, I have oh, my directions right here for how to make dancing popcorn. And it says we need a quart size jar. We need water, some water right here in this, this handy bottle. Um, popcorn kernels, definitely have some of those. 
baking soda, like this nifty stuff right here. And again, if this is something you'd like to try your house, I'm guessing maybe you have most of these ingredients right at home. Baking soda, white vinegar, stuff right here in this bottle. Again, something you probably have at home. And a spoon. We're gonna we'll use our, our measuring spoon to reach down in there and give our baking soda a stir. Because what we have to do now, let me sit back down so you can all see what I'm doing. First step is to fill the quart jar with some water. So hold it up here. I did make sure that I have a towel with me just in case. Because we're gonna make it mix some vinegar and some baking soda. Ever do that before? Hmm. Causes an interesting reaction. I'm okay. I'm gonna go about half full. It says, uh, oh, add the big, oh, can't do that. Yeah, ooh, that was close. Add the, they're gonna follow my directions. Add the baking soda. It says two to four tablespoons, and I have a little bit less water, so we're gonna fill that with two, so there's one. And two. Now, baking soda and water, so we're gonna mix it together. It's not gonna really do much, it's, it's, a, it's a base chemical called a base. What we want to do is we want to get that baking soda dissolved a little bit, and it, that's really easy to do. It dissolves pretty quickly. Give it a good stir in there. Now, in order to cause something to happen, we need to mix together an, a base and an acid, and we're going to use vinegar as our acid. So first of all, what we want to do is add our next direction, say, Now, drop in the popcorn kernels. So I'll put all of these in here. And let's add a little bit more. So there's probably about a quarter of a cup of kernels in there. I'm going to give it another little stir, not to do anything to the kernels, but just to make sure that that baking soda is mixed in. Now, if you look at it, you have your baking soda and water. And at the bottom down here, sitting on the bottom, just as nice as can be, are all those popcorn kernels. Do you see them? Yep. Okay, so here's where the magic starts. What we're going to do is, as I said, we need our base. So we are going to add, I mean, we need our chemical reaction. So when we have a base, we're going to add our, our acid to it. There's our vinegar. I'm going to remove stuff back because that's a little bit exciting. Now watch what's going to happen to those corn kernels. I think what I'm going to do is bring the camera a little closer because I want to make sure that you don't miss this. So I'll bring this back over here a little bit just so that you can see what indeed is going to happen here with these. Let's see if we can figure this out. I can wait for you to be able to see it. Hmm. Let's see. Aha, perfect, right there. All right, so you watch. Right now, kernels are just sitting on the bottom. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start adding a little bit of vinegar. That's probably too... Oh, my goodness. Look what's happening. Do you see it? Pull that over there. What's happening? Those kernels that were just sitting on the bottom... First of all, if you can see them up close, you'll see that they aren't just plain old popcorn kernels anymore. Each one is covered with little tiny bubbles. I'm going to add a little more. Let's try it again. How is it that now, all of a sudden, the kernels that were sitting on the bottom are now raising up in the liquid and floating to the top? And they sit up there for a little while sit on the top, and then all of a sudden, oh, they fall back down again. Let me see it again. Oh, dear. <laughs> Glad I have my tray there. 
Oh dear. Oh my, look what happened. We created lots of gas, little tiny gas bubbles. That's what happens um, in our chemical reaction. And when that happened, the gas bubbles grabbed onto the corn kernels and picked them up and the gas rises to the top. <gasps> oh, but what's happening? Oh no, after a while, as they sit on the top, the gas bubbles are exposed to the air and they pop. Just like any bubble would, you can see some of them in here. And when the bubbles pop, you know what happens. It releases those kernels and they go to the bottom where they then collect more gas bubbles and rise to the top. Bubbles burst and they fall back down again. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, I'll put this back over here. Now, I have a couple of questions to ask you about this this reaction that's happened right here. Um, for example, why do you think, uh, why do you think this happened? And I wish you could see this up close. I hope you get a chance to try this at home. Why do you think once they go to the top, they don't just sit there on the top? Seems like they would. But yeah, we talked about that. Those bubbles burst. Once they get to the top and get exposed to the air, they, they break open and the, the uh, bubbles just can't hold the popcorn kernels up anymore. Pretty so they drop back down. But when they get down to the bottom, they gather up more bubbles and you can actually see them as they hit the bottom. They don't have many bubbles, but they gather them up again. Oh, it's just fascinating, fascinating. Hope you get to try that. Okay, so dancing popcorn kernels. Okay, I have one more thing to show you today. We do have a craft kit for you to take home. And inside your craft kit, first of all, there's a fun thing, there's a recipe for making caramel corn. Do you ever try caramel corn? It's when you take popcorn and you add a little uh, brown sugar and butter and make like a, almost like a sauce for the top of it and then you bake it in the oven and it gets all hard and crispy and it's that salty sweet combination that's so good. So here's a really simple recipe that's inside your craft kit. And then inside here you also have can make a little we're gonna do we're gonna paint some popcorn do you ever think about doing that so inside your kit you have your directions and you have um, paintbrush I'm using that and you'll just need to supply your own scissors and glue and paint now for the paint you can just if you have some food coloring at home a little bit of food coloring and water works really well um, if you have temper paint just regular paint that you might do a craft project with. If you water it down a little bit, you can use that as well. So I'm going to take my piece of paper, move my rest of my supplies over. Oh, that popcorn is still <laughs> dancing around over there. Really glad I had that tray there. That could have been a disaster. Okay, so we are going to, basically what we're doing is recreating this. So what we're going to do is we're going to, whoop, I'm ahead of myself, inside your kit, you have your popcorn box and you have to cut it out. So good practice cutting. And if this is something you might find a little tricky, you can ask a good person, a good brother or sister, mom or dad, if they have a chance. Um, anybody that's around that might help you because the straight lines are easy to cut, but this little bumpy part on the top can be a little bit tricky. So then what we're going to do, we're just going to put a little bit of glue on the back of our popcorn box. And, oops, put that on here. Okay, so we've now attached our popcorn box and a place to put our pieces of popcorn this on the top it's just inside your kit you're going to find a little piece of paper that looks like this and this just kind of goes on the top I'll stick it under there a little bit so now your paper looks <laughs> and you, you might put yours on a little straighter than mine but that's okay looks like that and we want our popcorn box um, to have some stripes because that's often the way they are for who knows what reason so we'll put a little bit of glue on here and we'll attach our stripes which are also in the bag 
look like this. And there, and there, and then there. <laughs> How's that? So far, so good. Okay. Um, now, also in your kit, just in case someone might not know what, what you're making, but also just the way that they did it here on the, the, the box is we have to put on a label, a little bit more glue. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually, in order to do this craft, you wanna have a little bit of popcorn on hand and maybe you have a bag of already popped popcorn, that'll work fine. Or maybe you can pop your own in your microwave or your popcorn popper or however you choose to do it. Looks like that. We're gonna add some real popcorn to here. So I find with this, one of the best things to use is just regular old white glue. You don't have to, your glue stick will work as well, but this one helps the popcorn, this help kind of glue helps the popcorn stick a little bit better. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of dots like this. Okay, now the fun part. So I don't wanna tip it up because my glue will run all over the place, but we have our little drops there. Take some of my real popcorn and just stick it right there in that glue. Okay. Gotta get the bigger kernels. Because the popcorn doesn't really have a flat surface, that's why this liquid glue will be a little bit more successful. I think, hopefully that's enough. Another way to do this, which is even more effective, is to take a little piece of paper or a little tiny bowl and put your glue right in it and just dip the kernels in the glue and then add them to this. Okay, so now it looks like this. Can you see that? Now comes the fun part. I mean, this is a cute picture the way it is and you might want to stop there. But we are going to add a little bit of paint. Hmm, do we paint popcorn? So, a little tiny brush. We're gonna dip it in here and then just touch the popcorn. Oh my, <laughs> this one is purple. Whoa, that looks cool. Purple popcorn, have you ever had purple popcorn? I haven't, I wonder how that tastes. Hmm, let's try this one. Oh, ooh, this one's blue, very blue. That looks cool, I like the blue. One more color to try. Oh, this is beautiful. And just because I have it, I'm gonna add a little more purple in a few places. I like that purple color, it's beautiful. And when the, the uh, it's interesting, when the water, the paint hits the popcorn, um, you have to notice what it does. It kind of shrivels up a little bit. I don't think popcorn likes getting wet. But anyway, now our, our plain little box of popcorn is looking pretty fancy. And again, I wish they're not glued on very well, so I can't tip it too much, but hopefully you can see that. I'll get up a little closer. That's what my painted popcorn looks like. And you can just keep going, and all you do is dip it in and just barely touch it to the corn kernels. Looks pretty fancy. So there's my very fancy box of popcorn. All right, well, I hope that um, you get a chance to stop by the library and, and pick up your craft kit. Just email me um, here at the library or call the library and, and we can make some arrangements for your family to come and pick up your, your craft kit for you. So thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed um, talking about popcorn. I think I need to go make a batch. How about you? Bye everyone.